All right, so welcome back to episode two of the Raid series, season two. Um, we did have a bit of a an interesting start to the to the series. Unfortunately, I did die on uh, on both the PMC run and the Scav run, and uh, because of the chaoticness of the new wipe and what's been going on, I forgot to log in and claim my insurance. So when you do get your insurance back, you have a period of time before you can accept it. Um, the rag, uh, I, I insured through Prepper instead of Therapist, and because I didn't log in, I missed out on it, so I won't be able to get that. Um, for this episode, I think I might start off with a scav run on Interchange, just to try and get that bankroll up a little bit. I'm going to play a little bit safer, a bit slower. I've been putting a lot of thought into how I'm going to play this uh, playthrough. I really do want to show um, a more deliberate playstyle than a more chaotic, just get shit done kind of playstyle. So I will be going into uh, Interchange first on my scav, and then once I've done that, um, I'll use whatever gear I can get to start progressing with my uh, PMC. I am also going to be looking out for a fuel, like gen generator can, a fu fuel can, either the four square or the six square to uh, start crafting some salewas in the hideout. So uh, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. We just spawned in now if you're new to tarkov and um you should definitely be using your scav runs as much as possible um there's a lot to gain from it little risk and we are in goshen at the moment and when you're playing as a scav you need to be careful about um player scavs will just shoot you whereas computer scavs they won't care they'll just they'll just ignore you like this dude is um it's really cool that we've got that grizzly there it can be really helpful for the um the healing after each raid. The main thing I want to go for right now, though, is that fuel can I was talking about. So instead of going through the center of the mall, I think I'm going to go around the back. Um, I'm going to start looking for any sort of barter item, we call them, that will help increase our hideout being upgraded. Uh, and potentially make us some money as well. So... Like I said, I'm going to play it a little bit slower. Now, with as a scav, we actually do have multiple options to extract. You can extract either Emicon, also, also Railway, which is both corners of the map. You also have the scav camp. Now, the scav camp uh, to extract from, you need to um, extract from that with a PMC. So, it's not really the most ideal one. Because I don't really think anyone ever gets out of that one alive, so... Um, I've never actually been able to do it without being live on stream and having someone, like, pretty much deliberately stream snipe me to get it done. So, if you are lucky enough to team up with a, with a PMC as a scav, good on you. I don't know why I'm taking such a long path to get everything done here. Um, I would normally take that long, but... The Shush and Xenos are used to the hideout later on. They're not really needed, that, but... I thought I'd just pick them up because if we don't find anything else and we just want to run out, all of a sudden, for whatever reason, we can. And we only have 10 minutes left of this raid because uh, we spawned in so late as a scav, which is fine. Um, it means there's going to be less chance of PMCs going to be heckling us as well. So, wrenches at the moment actually sell for quite a bit because they're used to make toolkits. Now, the priority, like I said, we're going to go, go for those car batteries. Eh, sorry, not car batteries, the, uh, the fuel containers. There is actually about four or five weapon crates in this area um, that we could be looking for, but right now it's something we don't need to stress too much about. Might get rid of that Yotoda key. Um, not really used for anything. It opens up a key, uh, sorry, a car on woods, but there's nothing in the car to worry about, so. Now, I'm not one that's big on scav on scav violence, but if we do get the opportunity to shoot a scav and take some better gear, we will. Um, I know there's probably some people watching this going, shock horror. Like, I dare you shoot another scav, but... Um, I really want that bigger bigger backpack, bigger rig. Um, I'll take it a little bit faster right now. Crouching under there. Just I just want to get over to um the back of here, because... It's probably going to take us about three or four minutes to actually search. And we don't want to, um... We don't want to lose all our time before we even get over there. I 
Now, Ollie is a really contested spot, particularly early on in the in the raid. So just be careful about coming in here. Now, when we're looking for fuel, we're going to be looking around the back here. Now, it might be a little bit dark on your screen. Uh, if you're on a phone, you might need to turn the brightness up. But we are looking around the back here for any sort of fuel. They spawn on the top and bottom of these shells. Just like you see a motor there. Um, you can also get fuel. Uh, it would be really crappy to get rid of that grizzly. But at the same time, it's totally worth it for what we can do with that fuel container. I'll show you some tricks that you can do with it as well. Which will, uh, if we can get out with one. And these back shelves, they spawn car batteries and spark plugs as well. Um, which are qu worth quite a bit of money. Now, these hoses are worth heaps at the moment. Uh, as they're needed for the hideout. Early on in a wipe, hideouts are the easiest way to make money. Uh, all the hideout upgrades. Um, probably neither of them yet. Let's scav up the front. We've got a propane tank there. That's worth a little bit too. We're going to grab this tube. So here's normally really good for fuel. Another hose. in the front of the computers for flash drives because they can be really handy. Gav's just sticking their fingers up at us. The moment that I thought it was a player scav when he sucked his finger up. I still can't see any fuel which sucks. We've got an armored rig on. Um, something we could potentially grab. We do already have armor though, so. <clears throat> Gas analyzer spawn like on these shelves. And with this one. Gas analyzer. Another. Oh. oh wow. I don't even know how we would manage about getting this. Oh, is it sell for a hundred K each at the moment on the flea market? I don't want to keep the mag. Might as well just grab some stuff. Fortunately, it's going to be a little bit of a quiet raid, but... Quiet doesn't always mean bad. I heard a noise in that direction. Four minutes left. It probably takes us about two minutes to sprint there. We're going to start making a move now. Might just quickly run around the outside here so we can get fuel. I might have missed along the edge. Nope, nothing along there. There's sometimes scabs down the bottom here we could kill. If we really wanted to.
Kind of nice to have a bit of a quiet raid. Start. Emicon extract. Probably could have taken another minute to go search some more stuff, but I think four hoses is a pretty good find. Definitely won't be complaining about that. As long as they're not a run through. If it's a run through, we can still use them in the hideout, but nice to have straight away. Oh, didn't count as a run through, so. All right, so what I usually do here is I actually put all my uh, items I'm gonna use for the hideout, out, hideout or a quest, I always put them down the bottom. You'll be surprised how quickly you're gonna fill this stash up. Um, I'm pretty much just gonna chuck all this gear straight back on. That was a nice little top up of gear. Sell that one. And we're back into another raid. So pretty much from there. That was a pretty straightforward raid. It was good that I uh, wasn't too busy. Got some of the stuff done. Um, and then, yeah, now we'll be moving over to uh, getting into a another raid. I think we'll probably go customs now. Um, now that we've got a gun and some armor. I do want to repair this. Um, you got to look at like the value of repairing through mechanic. The difference isn't really that much. Um, and this is not really a really great armor. So I'm just going to do... A proper repair right there. Um, I'll chuck on this rig just so I've got that there. And I'm going to take this backpack. Um, we've got meds now. So I'm going to do this and this. Uh, the IFAC can heal bleeds, but it can't heal broken limbs. And the pain kill is there for uh, if we get a blacked out limb. From here, um, we'll chuck a helmet on. And we're going to go try and get our last kill on customs for the, uh, the five scav kills. After we've got those five scav kills, I don't need to go back to customs anytime soon i'll probably look at going different maps um working on different quests um we also need 1000 more xp to be able to unlock is actually no it might be it's changed now uh to level five i think all right it used to be level three to get the the next quest but it's all good so yeah um there is also we could find ray uh, paid sorry or we could have got the fuel can and gone into the hideout to do the crafts there but for now this is what we're going to be doing anyway into a custom trade and hopefully we uh have a bit of luck Getting some success. All right, we need to make, actually, I want to insure. And we need a bit of money to do that. So um, I'm going to sell these Makarovs, the mechanic, and the ammo for it too. And I'm also actually want to insure through therapist, but what I might do is I won't insure everything if I can't afford it. And so I'm going to insure everything. I'm not going to take that knife. I guess all that on. This is going to put us pretty poor. So not the greatest start, but if we can play smart and survive the raid, it'll be a, a really good start. All right. So with this spawn, um, battery key can spawn here. I haven't seen it spawn there in a long time. I'm trying to think. We only need one scav kill. We're actually right next to the uh, flash drive van. So we're going to check that first. Uh, and then we're going to get away from this spot and probably lay low around the back for a bit. Just because of uh, how chaotic it can get. All right, no flash drives are in those computers. Um, and people will be charging for that area too. So we're going to get back down here. And we're going to check some of the hidden stashes. Uh, and slowly progress through the map. I'm probably going to take a wide and uh, just go for one cheeky scav kill. And, and then see what we can come up against. But I'm not going to um, go too crazy charging into every fight. That BSMO will be really helpful. I'm going to put that there now. Hold on to that BSMO. There's a hidden stash down here. These hidden stashes can be really good um, for early on, particularly. 
getting yourself some items and uh and getting some cash flow behind you don't really need the pp ammo it is better than anything we can buy right now um but i'd prefer not to use ak's once we get through the ak ammo we've already got i'm probably going to start moving towards sks's or or a different type of gun um We actually have PSMO in here at the moment. Now I think about it. Probably should have changed that out in the hideout. Hopefully we don't go against anyone too geared. Alright, I'm not going to hug that side of the road because there's nowhere to run to for cover. So if I run into a contact down here and I'm on that side of the road, I've got to literally run across the road to get to cover. Whereas here, I could duck back around. I can go left and right. Just got to think about the where you put yourself in a position and where you can move to be able to avoid the next fight or to... Like, for example, if I see someone here and they don't see me, I can, you know, potentially go to their flank too if I, if I know they're moving to a certain location and set up a quick ambush on them. So it's about using the, your surroundings and that all to your advantage. Now, there's a spawn across the, out through this hole on the other side of the hill. We want to be a little bit careful with that spawn as well. Uh, a lot of people come straight down the hill. Um, they spawn on the other side of that and they come straight across here. So it's not an uncommon thing for that as well. Now there's a sniper scab that spawns up there and there's also one that spawns inside here. Um, you can't loot the one that's up on top of the hill but the one that spawns in, in what is called checkpoint um, you most certainly can can kill and loot. Another hidden stash here. PRS is really, really, really bad ammo. All slugs. Now we could... There is a van up here. On the other side here that spawns the 114 key. The 114 key is actually a really good key. I like it. It's got a computer, a med bag, and a safe in it. But when I can, early on, I try and pick it up. And when you loot and you spam X, you can actually go prone. Get, on, get behind a bit of cover. And here's our first Salewa. So what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to chuck that in like that. And uh, that, that can be now up like that. I want to go back to, to on this side. I'm going to heal up. Now, I could have gone straight down that way, but it's just more chance of running into into trouble. And right now, we're just going to take it a little bit slower. I'm going to push, go to a uh, new gas station to try and get my, my last scav kill. Um, but I also don't want to... I don't want to, like, just be running down the main, main road right now. There aren't any scavs that spawn around the back here, unfortunately, which uh, means we're pretty much running into a location where only PMCs will be. But I feel like if any PMCs were still here now, um, I'd be very surprised because they should already be pushing over towards the middle of the map by now. Or they would have ran back towards where I started. Uh, we'll check the hidden stash down here. We've got an MP7 now. I'm going to drink this pineapple juice now. Just so we can start leveling up the uh, the uh, hydration and energy here. On the bottom left. Get that ready to shoot. Got a nearly full mag, so it's not actually that bad. And we're going to head now towards... More towards the middle. Uh, back where we kind of came from, that road bit. And uh, push towards new gas station where we can try and kill some scavs. Looks like a scav to me. Bad shooting. Alright, so now we've got our scav kills, but also we shot and people know that we're here, so 
We want to do this nice and quick. Uh, Shamaska, this is a uh, ski hat with holes for eyes. It's actually needed for a ragman task. If you can grab one of them and hold on to it, that'd be nice. We're going to do a little tiny bit of insurance fraud here. Um, we're going to chuck it. Chuck our scav vest on the ground. That's scav in the... I think there's a scav just here as well. Yep. All right, we might as well get these scavs if we can. That's right, one down. Oh, another one in the distance over here. Oh god. I don't know who that last skull was shooting at. So we're going to take this rig. But that's that face mask. More things that you're going to be needed later as well. Unless you want to lay prone here. I'm going to run a bit of a risk here. I'm going to start throwing that mag in there. Pop up this mag. Once that's filled up with the BP ammo, which is the better ammo than the PS, um, I'll switch over to the, the mag, this mag that was just filled up. Someone's cutting onions downstairs. My eyes are starting to water. And the main thing I'm after here is a backpack. None of that's overly helpful. This can fit there and we'll take that. That 10,000 rules is not too bad. We know we're not, we killed someone behind the tree over here somewhere. Or maybe not. That ketter that was shooting. It's really bad. I think my wife's cutting up onions and I can't see. <laughs> now, this is actually a really good armor, but ours is actually going to be better. But we're going to wear it because we're gonna, it's worth the risk. Now that, that we have that, I'm actually going to drop the morphine and take that 20,000 rubles. Because that's actually a fair bit of rubles. Oh, I just need to go hide somewhere for a second. I need to close the door and open a window, otherwise I'm not going to be able to see. I can barely focus right now. Bear with me one second, guys. Oh god, just give me a bush to hide in, dude. Hide in. Alright, one second. Alright, so sorry about that. Hopefully, uh, I mean, the window's gonna help. I can barely see right now. Now, we've got a few kills. We've got some, some, uh, guns and ammo. That, that, uh, pistol grip with that shotgun is a massive find as well. Um, we're gonna need that for the first task for mechanic called Gunsmith Part 1. That pistol grip plus, uh, a barter trade is pretty much the entire gun that we need f for that hand in. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna try our best to just leave the raid now. We've already got plenty. We've got some loot. Um, we've avoided the players so far, and um, unfortunately we're going to have to head past one of the more contested areas. There is definitely a hidden stash here. Let me just put it down. Here it is. Uh, being in the dorms is the most contested area of this map, but if we can survive this, it'll be a big, big win for us. All right. Take it a little bit slower. Fairly deliberate in what we're doing. I know this is me being pedantic. If I'm going to get into a fight, I want the best ammo I can possibly have to kill someone. Ammo is so much more important than the gun. So much more important. Now you'll see what I, what I like to call stutter stepping. There's just like little short sprints that just uh, make a little bit extra noise when you're doing it. But the way I see it is it makes it one a little bit harder to predict your movement. 
when trying to target you. And also gives you that little bit of speed boost in getting out of a map. So instead of just walking across the map, taking like six, seven minutes to get across the whole map, you know, you could probably increase, you know, take a whole minute off by doing it. And also if someone's watching you from afar, trying to get it, that line up, that headshot from a predictable movement, um, it makes it that little bit harder to hit. Um, anytime you're gonna, you can change your elevation by going up and down, um, you know, you, you, it's harder. It's probably harder to tell what I'm actually doing, but I'm pressing A and D a lot to strafe left and right as I'm walking, um, and that's also to make it so if someone's looking at me from front on, they've got a harder time targeting me, or if they're going to look at me from behind. If you're just walking in a straight line, you, yeah, sure, someone shooting from that side is going to have, you know, to lead you and try and get a, a shot off that way. But if someone's from behind you, it's almost like you're standing still. So being able to just step that left and right a little bit really does make it a somewhat harder. Uh, for people to actually target you. Um, and I do this a lot. It's a, It should be fairly common knowledge for most people, but um, I do it a lot in FPS games. And there's two ways to go past the dorm. Like either right-hand side or the left-hand side. I'm just going to quickly check these tents for a flash drive. It's pretty common knowledge. I've made a couple of videos about it now. Oh, there's a flash drive between the, t uh, the duffel bag there and the guitar and the log there. Um, if you haven't checked out my uh, Trader Task Guides, um, by the time this one goes up, Skio's video should be live, and they'll, they'll be located in that video as well. Um, but as you're doing your tasks, um, I've got task guides going up which show off Every single task with where you can find items for them and how you do them and all that. There's timestamps and all that in the description down below. And there's new like funky timestamp thing for the actual timeline of the video, which is really cool. Um, so check out those videos for all that little extra tips and tricks if you're trying to get your task done. Um, because there's a lot of locations that people just don't realize when it comes to getting their task done. I'm trying to sprint, crouch, and stand. Sorry, sprint, sprint, prone, and stand up there to just dive underneath the log. A little bit jerky, um, but this is like the riskiest spot, and I'm trying to get past it as quickly as possible. So um, I actually like to take this low ground and go around the uh, on a wider angle around here, whereas a lot of players will uh, run from dorms over the hill. So the actual least, the least busy line on this map is actually where I am now. Um, there's the sniper scav up there. If I wanted to get the extra kill, I could, but I'm not going to. I don't want to give away my location. But um, going over that hill is a busier line, and going through construction is a busier line than actually taking this low ground here. Even though I'm right near the road, not many people actually, like, uh, watch down it. So to me, I, I feel like this is actually a lot safer spot. If I get engaged from the hill, I can go into that dead ground on the other side over there. Um, if I get engaged from the left-hand side, I've got the whole forest and hill behind me to... To retreat back into so uh, and you'll generally hear the people sprinting over the hill through all the bushes and that as well so now I'm gonna probably sprint this next bit just because it's over overly exposed I want to try and get through it quickly I'm holding my mouse wheel down there to uh, quick look left and right and the fire is lit so for us that's a massive I mean, be able to hope we get out of this map just checking to make sure there's no extract campers. Um, it's not uncommon, but it's also not super common either. And we are out. Well, we didn't engage any PMCs on both those raids, but it actually worked out in our favor because we got a lot done. Um, anyone who wants to know, I actually play on European servers. Um, generally we have all the European servers selected, sometimes Russia as well. And um, so you can't be like, oh, he's playing on Australian servers. It's none of that shit. We killed five scavs. Um, like I said, we took it a lot slower, avoided uh, a lot of the high risky areas. Didn't go inside dorms. I didn't go through any of the major areas. I, I New gas, so I avoided new gas and construction and the whole customs area. Pretty much everywhere that you're going to find players on the map, I pretty much avoided just so I got my scav kills and got out with all that loot. Um, There's some really good stuff that we got out of it. Uh, this is what I was talking about before about using the quick heal to heal. All you do is press apply and you've uh, healed up your player. From here, we're going to uh, empty out all the loot that we just got. And uh, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I found because 
something very important. And then uh, we'll probably wrap up the episode there. So um, first up, the biggest item that we got from that raid that probably most people didn't even think about would be this one. Uh, this pistol grip uh, is required for mechanic part one's first task. Uh, this plus um, every part from this shotgun minus, uh, so we need we need the plastic grip, the, the foregrip, that choke, and then we put that pistol grip on the back, change the flashlight to a laser and get rid of the sight, and that is the actual first quest completed for Gunsmith Part 1. Um, to, but to get this one is we need two elite pliers and a screwdriver. We have the, the screwdriver and we just need the elite pliers now. So um, most likely on our next uh, run, we're going to go interchange to get those pliers um, because it'll be a nice solid boost. Now with the Salewa, we're not actually going to hand that in straight away. We're going to hold on to it um, because we're going to, we can use it for healing up until the point that it's low and then we can hand it in from there. These Iskra uh, lunch boxes are used for a quest um, for Jaeger and it's um, not something that's like super hard to get and it's not super expensive on the flea market but it's still nice to be able to not have to pay for them. Um, bolts for the hideout. Herring isn't a big deal. We'll probably just hold on to the herring, the sorry. Um, Gunpowder can be used in the uh, hideout for crafting stuff. This is for cigarettes of a bad habit and these two morphine are actually a big find for uh, one of the therapist tasks where we have to hand in morphine. The Keta is actually not a bad little gun. It, uh, they've had a massive boost on the 9x18 ammunition recently, so that's a, a big one there. This MP7 we're probably going to sell. I can't see us using it, mostly because we can't find the ammo. Um, we've got 20,000 rubles, which we just found, which is a nice little top-up. And then we can put all this back down here. Now, with the BS ammo, we'll leave that aside. The splint down there, we could just vendor that. And that mask is used for a uh, quest later on as well. Uh, we might end up selling the mask just so we can uh, make some space, but it is used for a quest later on. Um, lastly, the ski hole, a ski hat with holes for eyes. We need uh, that for a, for a ragman task. And this look armor is really nice. So we'll give that a repair with just prepper because it heals, it repairs really well. And then we're pretty much ready for the next raid. So um, we will sell this, um, this whole gun. I don't think I'm going to use it. And uh, yeah. We need the extra cash anyway, so we'll sell that one, get our... Okay, so this is actually something you can do, which I don't think we can do it already. So we can disassemble. Uh, we would have got about, I think it was about 19 or 20,000 rubles that way. Uh, we get 11,000 there. Might have been less, actually. And then we get 12,000 there. So you get like maybe 10% extra money if you actually disassemble all your guns. Um, if you want to do that for a little bit extra cash. So guys, that is the end of this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure you smash the shit out of that like button for the um, YouTube algorithm. Spread the word if you've got any friends that are new to Tarkov or um, you think that they would enjoy this series. I really would love it if you guys could uh, introduce them to it. Uh, a lot of time and effort goes into this from both myself and the editors. If the editors are watching, obviously they're watching this, but they could say hi now if they want to do a little hey thing. And um, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, ask as many questions as you want. If you've got any advice in how you think this video could be improved, Chuck it in the comments below as well because the editors do read all the comments um, and we, we sit down and we talk about this stuff to help hopefully make the best videos possible for you guys. Um, so yeah, guys, thanks again. Um, I do stream on Twitch every day of the week, so go down the link below, give me a follow over there. And lastly, I'll see you next time.